Hello world and welcome to Web Dev Frontiers. My name is Tomasz and I'm here to share my experience with you in WebTech. In today's video, I'm going to show you five things that you didn't know the console in your DevTools panel can do. Let's jump straight in. The first set of examples that I'm going to share with you are the so-called dollar expressions or the dollar operators. Now there's quite a few of them, so let's start by the simplest one dollar and then the underscore sign. So what does it do? It basically allows you to access the result of the previously evaluated expression. So let me give you a very simple example. So let's say that our operation in JavaScript is one plus two, which is going to give us a result of three. And let's say that you would like to work with this result three again without having to re-evaluate the expression. All you need to do is type in the dollar symbol and an underscore, and that is going to give you the result of the previously executed expression. Now, this is really useful for situations when you have slightly more complex expressions, like this array of objects here, where we are running a filter operation on this particular array, and that returns us one object inside the array as part of the filter operation. And let's say you would like to access this because you want to do something with this. All you need to do is again, type in dollar and underscore, and now you have access to the response that was a result of the previously executed JavaScript expression. The next thing that I will talk about is the dollar zero expression. So let's say that you're visiting a website. So let me just fire up my own website here. And let's say that you select an element on this website. So we're going to select this H1. And as you can see, DevTools jumps straight into the elements panel. But if you go to console and if you type in dollar and zero, you will have access to the elements that you have selected last. And you can not only do $0, but you can also do $1, $2, $3, and $4 as well. So you can go back to accessing elements that you have selected in the past. And just a kind reminder, $0 is going to be always the latest element that you have selected, or in other words, the element that you've selected last. So let's actually try this as well. So let me go and again, select the H1. Let's select this high element, which is another H1. Let's select this paragraph here as well. So now if I type in $0, I have the paragraph. If I type in $1, I'm going to have the class with the greeting. And then $2 will bring up the H1 element, which is the main hero H1 here. Okay, and then two more dollar expressions that I would like to show you. One is going to be a simple dollar sign. And a simple dollar sign is basically the equivalent of you running document.query selector. Okay, so let's say you would like to find all the H1s. All you need to do is type in dollar $H1. And because this is using the query selector, it only brings up the first instance of the element that you're looking for. And you can pass any complex expressions in here. It doesn't have to be just an element. It can be using an attribute filter or anything that you would want to access. Then we have the double dollar sign. And hopefully you can guess what this is doing. So if the single dollar sign was a document query selector, the double dollar sign is the document query selector all. So again, running exactly the same expression will now return an array of three items because on this page, I have exactly three H1 elements. The second example that I would like to show you inside the console panel in DevTools is actually a function called get event listeners. The get event listeners function is built into DevTools and it allows you to explore what event listeners particular elements have within a web page. So the easiest way to get started with it is just to type in get event listeners and you can just pass the document object to it. Now the document object will be the DOM of the site that you're looking at or it's going to reference the DOM that you're looking at. And in this case, notice that I have four event listeners registered on this page. Now, two of them, like orcs click and visibility change are enabled by, I think, Google Tag Manager, but we can actually check that because it will tell you what the listener does and where it's coming from. So it is in fact my Google Tag Manager and the same is true for visibility change. But then DOM content loaded and click are both event listeners that I have added to the page. So we can also check this. You can open up the listener and we can see that this DOM content loaded is being referenced from index line three to three. Okay, and I can click on that 
and it will bring that up inside the sources panel just to verify it is indeed an event listener. And this is really useful because you can actually click on any element on the page or you can select any element. So for example, let's go ahead and select this button, go back to console. And now if you were paying attention before, all we need to do is just pass dollar zero because that's going to reference the DOM elements that we have selected last. And now I can pass that as an argument to get event listeners. And this will indeed tell us that there is an event listener for a click event, which is going to call my switch theme function. This next example, in my opinion, is a real productivity booster. So imagine that you have an application where you would like to monitor what a particular function is doing when that function is actually called. So I prepared a very simple demo where I have two input boxes and a button that would add the two numbers that you add inside those input boxes, right? So if I add one and two here, press the button, that is going to return us the value three. Now, you can actually monitor this function. So if I go back to the console panel in DevTools, and if I type in monitor, followed by the name of the function, I can now get a response inside the console whenever the function is being executed. Furthermore, it also displays the arguments with which the function was called. So if I just rewrite this to 20 instead of two and call the function again, I get the message log automatically that says function add called with arguments one and 20. And you can monitor any number of functions that you want. And once you have done with your debugging and investigation of your particular function, you can call the unmonitor function and then pass in the name of the function that you would like to stop monitoring. And now the function monitoring stopped. You can not only monitor function calls, but you can also monitor events. So let's go back to my website again, and I'm selecting this button, and we're going to see how we can monitor events for this particular button, or when this button is actually called. I'm going to go back to console, and instead of typing in monitor, I'm going to type in monitor events this time. And remember that I can use the $0 shortcut to access the DOM elements that I access last. And this particular function also requires us to specify a second parameter, which is the type of event that we would like to monitor. So I'm just going to specify that to be the click event. And now if I click this button here, right here, then I get information about this particular event that came in. And very similarly, if I'm done with my investigation or my debugging, I can just type in unmonitor events and then call dollar zero again and that would have removed the event monitoring from the console feature number four is also really amazing so for this i've prepared yet another example where i have an html page with two list items and some small javascript code that basically will add additional characters from this array to the html using just plain vanilla javascript so every time when i click the load more button a new character would be added to the list. And then essentially once the array is empty, the button is disabled. Okay, so this is the application at hand. So let's go back to the console panel. And what I would like to show you are the so-called watch expressions. So notice there's this little eye icon here inside the console and we can create a live watch expression. So essentially we can monitor particular expressions and get messages about them when they change. In this example, I would like to watch if a new list item is going to be added to the existing list. So I can very simply select the list items and see if a new value gets added. Now I could do something like document dot query selector all etc etc, but we already know that I can just use the double dollar symbol here. And the reason why I show this to you is because I want you to realize that all the other shortcuts that I showed you work in other places inside DevTools as well. And then all I'm going to type in is LI. So in this case, notice we have two elements 
righteously, right? Because we have two items in the list. But if I hit load more, then this list will automatically update. The watch expression automatically updates the result of what I'm asking for. Now, this is not really meaningful, right? Just to display that, hey, there's a list item and there's a new list item added. So let's actually get rid of this and let's add a different expression. Again, using the double dollar symbol here, typing in li. And what's really great about DevTools is that now I can use standard JavaScript expression. So I can now iterate through this. And for every list item, I can just ask for the text content. Okay, so in this case, I am now accessing the actual text values from the list items. And so if I click the load more button, then that list also updates. And it will keep on updating as long as I have characters to add. And this is really great for watching expressions that you don't expect to change, or rather, you don't know why they are changing or you don't see the change. So this is really, really useful. And hopefully this will help you as well at some point. And the final trick that I would like to show you is yet another built-in function inside the console panel in DevTools, and that's going to be the copy function. So let's assume that you have this code again where you have an array of objects and you would like to filter out a particular value, and now you have a response. And do bear in mind that you know the example that I'm showing you here is relatively simple, but you know you could be evaluating expressions inside your console that are a lot more complex. You get a lot of additional responses, or you get an array of objects with multiple items, but you can still apply this trick. So we got the result of the filter operation here. And let's say now you would like to copy this entire object to your code editor, maybe to Visual Studio Code or whatever other code editor you may be using. So all you need to do now is just type in copy and remember dollar underscore will actually access the last evaluated expressions result. So basically copy will take that and copy it to your clipboard. So if I hit enter here, and if I do a paste command, notice that I have now pasted the response that came back from that filter operation. And I find this really, really useful, especially if I'm testing something and the response that I get back is really long and I can't really select everything because you know I may not want to have the prototype selected. I just want the results to be added to my editor. I say copy dollar underscore, and now I can paste this response anywhere where I want. All right, so these were five tricks that I wanted to share with you inside the console panel for DevTools. I hope that you found them to be useful and that you will be able to apply this in your everyday development. If you have some other favorites that you would like to share, please add them to the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video. I would appreciate if you would give this video a thumbs up and also if you would subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.